I wake up, thank God for the day. You know I brought my knife to the way. Ain't no complaints. Nah. Got me going jeans, cause I'm cool with Checking from my bitch, yo, boom, and want some more, nigga. I'm about to make beats all day. Fuck up your attitude, fuck all the gratitude. I'm a bit magical, all this shit magical. Who is Metro Beats and where are you from? Leland Tyler Wayne, aka Metro Boomin, aka Metro! AKA yeah, Metro, yeah, Metro, yeah, Metro. is a producer, writer, and DJ who was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. As far as putting in work, you from St. Louis, correct? Yeah, man. A lot of people think I'm from Atlanta. I'm not from Atlanta. Hey, be straight. I mess with Atlanta, though. But I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. He went by the name of Metro Beats at first, but got tired of people calling him that. Basically, he thought it was corny. 17. Yeah, I'm still in high school. Everybody be asking me, got to drop out. Jeezy, no, I'm 11th grade, go to school every day. But I missed a lot of school. I still go to school almost every day. So, yeah, yeah. Is it hard juggling going to high school and, and being a producer for a major artist? It definitely is. At first, it kind of, but when I like got more serious into it, and a lot more serious and things started happening, then it's like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a job. Like, it's, a, it's a lot more to handle as far as like priorities and stuff. That boy Metro been making beats since high school and was already working with Waka, Gucci, OJ the Juice Man, Project Pat, French Montana, and Shorty Low. Metro always loved music. In the seventh grade, he was in a band for a second playing bass guitar. He always wanted a rap, but he needed beats. He couldn't afford any, so he just made his own. Smart move. He ended up liking making beats more, so he just dropped the rap thing. On Christmas when he was 13, his mom bought him his first laptop. Shout out to her though. He then downloaded Fruity Loops after being inspired by that boy Big Soldier, Young Draco, and just started messing around with it. Man, I've been Fruity Loops since day one. You know, Soldier Boy inspired. <laughs> Yo, keep it real, I'm gonna keep it real. I can't even lie to you. But um, I remember about seventh grade, my mom got me an MPC 1000 for my birthday. You know. Play with that a little bit. During high school, his mom used to drive him for over eight hours from St. Louis to Atlanta just to collab with artists he met online. She a real one, bruh. It ultimately led to him actually meeting with Gucci in the summer of 2011. Bruh, can you imagine being in high school in 2011 and you could tell your homies you making beats for Gucci and Waka? Bruh. When he graduated high school, he actually moved to Atlanta to attend Morehouse College to study business management. But you know the typical come up story, bruh. That boy said, nah, fam, I can't do this no more. Shit taking too much of my time. I just want to make heat. Money on top of money, nigga. Conversation. Everything's dollar sign. I got bad bitches, bitch so bad she harder than a dime. Metro would eventually collab with Future on their first song together named Hard in 2012 off of DJ Esco's mixtape Welcome to Molly World. Future rocked with the beat so much that he wanted Metro to be around him all the time. And then after that beat, you know what I'm saying, he was just excited and he just wanted me around all the time. So That gained Metro a lot of exposure. Speaking of him and Future, they would collab again on what would become a smash hit for 2013 with the song Karate Chop. Yo, I don't know about you, but that song was everywhere that year. He then went on to announce his debut mixtape in May of that year, 19 and booming. In fact, he said that project had been floating around in the air since he was 17. He had 17 and booming, then it became 18 and booming, then eventually 19 and booming. I guess he was just too busy, you know? Shit was just booming. And I'm here with an up and coming producer who I promise you by this time next year will be a household name. He goes by the name of Metro Boomin. I pray so, brother. I'm putting that pressure on you right you now. Are, man. Now I gotta work 10 times off.
together then. <laughs> So much shit in these beats niggas don't even know oh, about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, niggas will talk about our beats and be like, man, them niggas beats don't even be down. They don't be that boy yeah. shit. Yeah, it don't be <laughs> intricate. It don't be. This shit simple. Simple as fuck, yeah. Get paid when I get paid. It's so much in there. Please do. Show me. Metro Boomin want some more, nigga. 19 and Boomin was finally released on October 7, 2013, and spawned the Metro Boomin tag you hear Thugga say on the song Some More that's still used to this day. Twenty fourteen was a pretty big year for Metro, and personally, it's one of my favorite years in life. Period. For many reasons, but the music that year was just so fire to me, bro. Starting off the year with a banger with the language with him and Thug, which was supposed to spawn a mixtape between the two titled Metro Thuggin', which unfortunately never released. Come on, bro. Got his next single as well. That shit is about to take off. That honest, I fuck with it. Like it's melodic, but I feel it's a mix of like. Good cushion alcohol, but you ain't know it with a little karate chop. Like, it's just, you know what I'm saying? The shit started with them, the spins that uh, played the keys out. You know what I'm saying? Went like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got the little weird ass drum. Fuck with it because you know what I'm saying. In a time where a lot of shit is like similar, even me and Spence were talking about it the other day. We we're like, man, I'm convinced it doesn't sound like anything else. Honest was a smash hit when that song released. He's right when he said that song didn't sound like anything else. It still sounds like it could come out today. He actually produced a couple songs on that Honest album, and he also produced the song 1 A.M. on YG's album. And honestly, bro, I didn't even know he produced that song until I did my research for this video. It was sweating in the morning, and I was up yawning. Like, mm, like don't like, you know, how don't like was like a perfect. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. It was like a perfect like evil melody. Probably like a, mm, you know, black keys. And yeah, shit. like like just some ill like drive type feeling. <laughs> My trap is still bucking the hundreds and hundreds blue diamonds, I got it. Bruh, Metro produced Skyfall, Mama Sita, which is another classic. Mama Sita, Sita, Sita. Basement Freestyle and Back from Travis's Days Before Rodeo mixtape. Metro and Southside also produced a smash hit Tuesday with McConan and Drake. Metro Boomin got the club going up on the Tuesday. Metro Boomin wants some more. All my niggas some junkies, they keep that bread on them, dog. All this is radical, all this is radical, all this is radical, all this is radical. White girl with me like Elvis, old girl say I'm too selfish. I can roll it on, put reverse dogs. Future's Monster Mixtape was released on October 28, 2014. It was the tape that rejuvenated Future's career and pretty much jump-started Future into Final Form Frieza. Oh man, that's hard to say. It's like picking a kid. I don't even know if three's enough. Um, Savage Mode. Damn, only three. See, because that's how shit get left out, and you know what I'm saying? I'm still always gonna remember when me, Esco, and Future made Monster. Like, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was a very important part in all of our careers. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say, definitely, definitely say Dirty Sprite too. Yeah. 
Dirty Sprite 2 was released in July of that year, and basically the whole damn tape was produced by Metro. This tape is a trap classic, bro, and really was the hottest shit out at the time. 2015 Future was truly undefeated. But without Metro, who knows how the vibe of the tape would have sounded like. Rodeo is an album that many consider to be one of the best trap albums of all time, and Metro had a lot to do with that. He helped produce songs like Pornography, 3500, Wasted, Nightcrawler, which is the best song on there in my opinion, and OK Alright. All straight bangers, bruh. Third shit to be for the time, like perfect time. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive released just two months after DS2 with Future and Drake both being at the peak of their careers. It was kind of like Goku and Vegeta fusing together. Metro produced 90% of this tape and I gotta be honest though, when I first heard it back then I was kind of like this is fire but it feels kind of rushed and it's probably not gonna sound so good a few years from now or it'll get old quick. But five years later and it actually sounds like it could have came out today, it still holds up well. Some might consider this a classic mixtape. Quick fact, the first First time we ever heard if young metro don't trust you i'm gonna shoot you was actually in a song by uncle murder featuring future called right now young metro don't trust you i'm gonna shoot you he also produced two songs off of slime season one and two be me see me and all over both of them shits is fire got me a chicken with brain i swear and got me a chicken with brain sweat all over my blood all over my shoes hey i just need a girlfriend Purple Rain is a super underrated mixtape by that boy Future, with Metro producing six songs off of it, which include All Right, Wicked, Drippin', Hater Shit, Purple Rain, and In Abundance. Metro Evol was released less than a month later, bruh. Can you believe that? I forgot it was so close together. With Metro producing only two songs on it, with Zanny Family and the smash hit Low Life. Well, they did put Wicked on it, but that was on Purple Rain too. <laughs> I just want feel liberated. Ah, yo, bruh. The life of Pablo, bro. Man, when this came out, the hype was so big, bro. This tape is hella nostalgic for me. I remember it only being available on Tidal, I believe. But you know, your boy had that leaked version from some sketchy ass website. Metro helped produce four songs on this tape Father Stretch My Hands, classic, Waves, FML, and Facts. Hit it from the back, watch a nigga bless you. Flexing on that bitch, hold up, flexing on that bitch, bout a necklace on that bitch, hold up. Why these niggas capping so hard? Raindrops, drop, drop top, drop top, smoking, no cooking, the hot box. Cooking. Clearly, Metro had an amazing year in 2016, but you thought that year was lit for him? <laughs> he wasn't even in his bag yet, bro. 2017 was his biggest year, in my opinion. Last night took an L, but tonight I bounce back. Yeah, I'm both. Ain't no complaints. Nah. Rex in the bank. Five, six, seven, eight M's in my bank account. Yeah, in my bank account. In Italy, got too far and hoes they DM me. Draw the top. Bruh, just take a look at this. Damn near every song here went at least three times platinum, bruh. Talk about plaques on plaques. And that's not even including the tape he did with Nav, Perfect Timing. I could open up a bakery, but gats on me. Or the classic Without Warning with 21 and Offset. Going to the jeweler, but the AP, yeah. Or even the mediocre Double or Nothing mixtape with him and Big Sean. Trying to give you more life. I can see through the spike. 2018. It's definitely an interesting year for Metro. It started off like every other year, you know, pretty lit, until one day Metro decides to post this on his Instagram. He deletes all his photos and changes his bio to this. I know me personally, I was like, wait, what? Huh? Who I? How are you gonna retire in his prime like that? It's like if LeBron retired after winning his second ring. Like, wait, what? Then a week later, Gucci posted this on his story. It's 
with my pretty sadity bitch, but really she ain't a sound. Dreads out, nigga. I'm impatient, I can't wait to bring that bread out. I'm in overdue. Drink. Take a little sip of that ass. Blow it. Flood all my bitches in that. Yeah. Took the bitch on the trip, now she feeling me. Not All Heroes Wear Capes was released on November 8th, 2018, with nothing but bangers on it, bro. A super underrated project to me. He even blessed us with all the instrumentals, bro. That's fire. You can say that was a coming out party for Metro. Twenty nineteen was a pretty quiet year for Metro, although he did help produce pretty much every song on Offset's Father of Four album. Me about the men who try to get between. I want it all now. I've been running through the pussy, need a dog pound. Savage mode is to go hard, not allowing anything to stop or deter you from your mission. Calm down, bad. Bright daylight, I ain't need no match. Running, running, running. I leave all my cars running. Nah, but 2020 has been a pretty lit ass year for Metro, bro. Producing songs off of After Hours, which don't even get me started on that shit, not getting any Grammy nominations, straight robbery. And Savage Mode 2, which was one of the hardest tapes of the year, fam. Snitches and rats. Snitches and rats. <laughs> Fire. And then Future has the nerve, the goddamn nerve, to post this on his Instagram yesterday with the caption saying Monster 2? Why y'all gotta do me like this, fam? Why? 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 So yeah, Young Metro has had a pretty damn successful career so far, to say the least. For someone who's been on GQ magazine a bunch of times as a producer, you don't really see that too often. That boy is extremely influential and probably the greatest hip hop producer since the 2010s. But just make sure he trusts you though, or Future's probably gonna shoot you, fam. Ah!